Hello, hello. This is Johannes Wadri from Hold to Run. Today, I will share one piece of code that I've been using and it has proven to be useful. I have detached this program library from my actual project and it contains that adaptive banner add, which does pretty much three main things. With this, the most of all, to respect the Google's new rules for better ads, they have become really strict how you should implement ads for them to be non-intrusive. So the first major thing is that this library that I'll be releasing in GitHub does is that the ad will not just pop up in in the space and shift your graphics like so. So the first thing, like you can see, let's open a fragment. You can see the animation and we do a nice little animation to close the gap. So it didn't intrude it, the space to reserve, reserve uh, for the banner ad to exist already had a space reservation and then we even close the gap. So that's one major thing to implement these ads in non-intrusive way to not get banned by Google AdMob. Okay, that's one. Then the second major thing with this one is that it actually, now I'm in this, uh, let's say, modulized uh, program package that I will be releasing into GitHub. The second major thing is that you can now drive one or three or more uh, ad suppliers with this banner ad here. Now that that's going to be done with the ads provider in here. So it it's already packed up with three major players. Like you can see, we have AdMob. That's the default. Then you can play those ads from Meta, Facebook Meta, and even from Unity. So this little package here as a provider, you can ask, ask this to supply any of these three uh, ad suppliers and it'll do that. Like you can see Meta, that's the first one. Sorry, AdMob is the first one. Then it's Meta. And the last one, which I'm not using currently, is Unity. So all these are now standardized to be abstract into the back to the code as one. It doesn't matter. So that's pretty cool and has been useful. The thing is that um, now it's up to you to decide from where you want to make those calls, what ads should be used. So this is my angle to implement software based mediation. So now you can be also the boss who's going to be in feeding ads in your app and you don't need to release new application into the Google Play. But instead, if you wish, you can do as I did and uh, integrate your app into Firebase and actually get these re via remote configuration. So this works. In They are ready to be used if you wish. If you don't, let's just come up with default values in here. So, and there you go. Of course, before you can work with remote, you do have to set up your Firebase, integrate your application package into Firebase and define your values that you can then manipulate in here. Let's say we would want to um, change AdMob into Meta. Well, with a new keyword, I could just say Meta and release this into online, save it and release it and all users with that application would now be injected with this new va parameter value and the uh, ad selector in the application would now be aware that, hey, let's change from AdMob into Meta or into Unity. 
as you can see in here the uh, the selector value will be refreshed in here and the, it's gonna be fed in to the um, uh, ads manager which is as an object in here and in here the selector is driven through when selector and then we know which ad supplier we need to uh, return okay so remember you have to come up with the google json services file i cannot do that for you and i cannot release my own private services json file for for your application it just will not work so in in this demo uh, uh, github project it's not going to exist in in here in the root where it should be so that also means that if you try to run this as is with the firebase and google admob uh, uh, libraries being integrated it's it's not going to even start so for this to start you have to uh, set up your app in in the admob and get your own banner ad IDs into this program. And also, if you also decide to use the Firebase remote configuration uh, uh, and, and not remove it from this library, you have to uh, definitely uh, integrate your app in into Google Firebase. It's free. And download your own Google services.json file and place it in in here in the root of the uh, project so in the project app and here this is the place where you have to always place after that your package will be recognized by these google services via admob ads or the, the firebase and then you can start using those online services it's going to be acknowledged by google so remember this otherwise this library will not work so before we go uh, uh, deeper into this software package and go through these classes to get you familiar the third major thing that this actually does is that it also uh, makes a kickstart for those ads this is something I noted while using AdMob, uh, these uh, banner ads that which pretty much are always being displayed in here. So sometimes they can freeze. And uh, instead of being refreshed, I guess the default ref ref refresh cycle should be 90 seconds or so. They just pretty much die. They, they, they're gonna start showing you this same banner ad which doesn't produce any views it it's just there the only thing probably that it it's gonna do if you click it it's gonna take the user into the page that google intended the user to end up via that ad so that one is also being implemented in this library so let's take a look at the uh, refresh so in in the banner ad ads manager mm, not this one let's go in here and open this composable banner ad so we have in here in the update method of this android view we have additional function which is going to ensure that each time that the app is started or each time that the user shifts between views between views means that you, he opens another fragment and uh, that we're going to check that uh, if the uh, ad should be refreshed it, or if it actually refreshed itself so then if it should be refreshed this is gonna make a kickstart for the ad and it works 
So I've tested it many times. Just let me know if it really doesn't work, but it should. So this will uh, break the eyes from phrased banners. At least it has done so for my application. So that's something little things that what that has pushed me to uh, implement this kind of a library. And now I want to uh, release into the GitHub and make it public and uh, probably it even might end up being better. So, okay, let's go through these classes. I've already made a video of this specific topic, but uh, now it's been uh, modulized into this GitHub project, which I'll be uploading and releasing. So let's take a look at these ones quickly. Okay, so let's start from the manifest. I tried to uh, minimize everything as much as possible. So you probably know also what the uh, ads need to operate, but I have set up the basic permissions for this GitHub library, internet, and this new permission for the ad ID. These, must, these two must at least exist, okay? Then we have in the application, we have declared this application class called banner ad mediation, which is the name of the app. So in here, you'll find this class underneath the application folder. So what this actually does, it's gonna initialize the, uh, the Firebase. So if you really don't want to use remote configuration and make it more simple, just comment all these Firebase uh, related pro softwares off, because if you don't use it, then don't leave them in here. I'm not just gonna leave this in here. So Firebase has to be initialized as soon as possible. So that's why it is in, in the application class, which gets called one time. And it's the first thing the app calls while it starts to exist. The second, what this does in this library is I'll be using the custom ad manager, as you can see in here, and I'll be initializing meta for you. Again, Unity, I'm not going to be initializing it because I don't use it. You may decide to use it or not. So let's take a look at this ads manager. So this ads manager is a class that initializes all three uh, ad suppliers. So AdMob, Meta and Unity if you intend to do so. And it'll also monitor the stage of the initialization. So meta monitoring and unity monitoring, if you wish, if you want to log what is happening in there or enable additional debug functions. Okay. Here's a nuance. Meta should be initialized in the application class, but again, add mob is initialized in the activity class on create. So this is how I understood Google uh, intended it to work. So that is why it is in here. Okay. Then in the on create, now we're in the main activity where it holds the all basic main functions and also the compost functions. We are activating the Firebase. So this is the first time we use this custom class called remote config it's this in here so if you don't use this again comment this one out we are setting up the remote uh, configuration for the firebase so let's open this one so as i understand google wants you to uh, initialize the uh, the firebase remote config at the on create of the uh, activity class. So that's what I'm doing in here. And uh, these are the keywords in here. You can configure this remotely or locally, but this is intended for the remote configuration to change how the ad who serves ads 
should the uh, banner be adaptive or fixed size this is gonna affect that one and how often should we try to do the uh, forced reload if we find out that the ad has been frozen for quite some time so this is the time you can decide so, so these are the uh, key words okay and the default configuration list hasmap is gonna be uh, passed in into this while this is being initialized so from the add config add config is found in in the secrets you're gonna be finding these values that these keys will hold okay let's take a look at that one so this is the main configuration that you need to set up these are the uh, selectors if we intend to use admop unity or meta it's my kids playing the piano then uh, you need to uh, replace your banner id if you use admop you'll get that from your google admop these are mine you cannot use these so i have to censure these out you can surely test your add with the test id banner add id this is google's then you have to place if you want to use meta your meta id in here and also if you want to test the meta ads you need to uh, place your meta banner id after this mark here so i've always written your id in here and finally for the meta testing should also require hash id from the device so that's gonna be shown only in the uh, log cat when you try to uh, show use meta ads so pick it up from there quite cryptic but uh, that's how <laughs> they offer it okay and unity it's not in use but it's a possibility okay also this will hold the uh, reload times which you can mo modify as you wish the default that i'm always using it's the uh, 90 seconds in here and the add config is also the class that uh, it's gonna be used when we want to uh, check if it's already time to load and we're gonna save the last successful load time from our uh, banner ad program when it's a success okay so these are saved into prevs data store and also we're getting the value from the prevs data store so let's take a look at that one let's go into the uh, composable okay this was the, the custom force refresh value to break the eyes from frozen ads to make them live again so in here the banner ad which does all the uh, animations for the ad it also self monitors if it should reload the banner ad with this piece of code in here pretty nice okay so just keep on adding ad suppliers if you want to use more than admop or meta i'm just using again these two as i found them to be quite useful and uh, working ad suppliers for my application so the unity mm, i'm not too sure about banner ads maybe it's better one for some other ads but maybe not for the banners okay then the add config time to load is also gonna get checked in in the on start of the main activity so when the app continues we also do the check if the ad should be reloaded and this gonna those are the uh, hooks in the program to ensure that it's gonna get refreshed okay i've also replaced these remote configuration uh, setups in in the uh, program to ensure we all always get 
new values, if you change something, actually if you intend to use your add config values from the Firebase, we need to uh, manually refresh the uh, apps to ensure that we pull these new values into the program. So those are always checked in the on start. So let's take a look at this one. The remote config uh, object is in its Firebase folder. Let's open that one. So we are just getting the instance and activating the latest values from our Firebase. So this is what it pretty much does and we log it's a success or not success. Okay. So that's how you pull them. What else do we need to check? Uh, there's coin. Just a couple of uh, classes that I left in here. I like coin, so I left coin in here. You can use this or not. I just leave them. The only thing I create through coin are main view model and my logging class. Okay, those are used in various places in in these classes. Then some additional tools, compose utils to get the uh, dp and pixel values for the animation. So these are called from the uh, composable and network connection. In some phase we do need to check if when we are trying to show the ad if it's actually online. So in here should we just keep on showing animation of flashing dots or uh, uh, just stop the loading. So pretty much that's what we are doing in here. Go, go for the default. Okay and prefs data store. This is going to be saving the persistent data for for when was the last success of a banner at loading and we save it and we get it from here. So these let's before we stop we're going to take a look at the uh, build cradle for the dependencies also. And that's pretty much it. Not too much if you really don't use Firebase, ensure that you remove this class from all of the places in the program. Okay, so we're about to be finished. One, there was fourth thing that this is the library is good for, and it's to preserve the existing banner ad and not to create a new one every time you shift between uh, these fragments. So as you can see, it's just not it's it's not reloading, recreating the banner ad again and again when you shift between fragments. That's something that you probably have already bumped into. That why does it recreate that banner ad, reload it again and again and again. So once we have successfully created, we will hold on to that banner even while we are shifting between these uh, fragments or shifting between activities in here. So, and it's alive. So that's the thing if you want to use this or do it by yourself, it's done by, with, by the fact that we are holding a view model reference for the view group in here. So let's see. In here we have a main view. So we're passing in main add view group. And for the, the fragment banner ad we're passing in view model based fragment add view group. So it doesn't yet know that it's gonna be Google AdMob banner. It doesn't know if it's going to be Meta AdMob Meta banner. It doesn't know if it's going to be Unity banner, but we're going to be telling it later on that, hey, you're going to be actually now Google banner, Meta banner or Unity banner. So the program takes care of that and we identify that to be so. 
but as it's gonna be placed in the in the uh, view model, it's not gonna get destroyed in between the uh, 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 shifting from fragment to another fragment or in between composes. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. And uh, the functions in here, I have these main functions to take care of the life cycles. So we do know when we need to null the banner, we do know when we need to destroy those add views, we do know when we need to pause them and resume. So this is fully life cycle integrated. So let's take a look. I'm obviously missing. I'm not calling these, so I need to finish this one. So probably nulling the banner belongs in the on destroy. Uh, destroy banners definitely goes into the uh, activities destroy and null this the jobs probably hmm let's take a quick reference and finish this one while we're at it so let's go into the actual project and into main view model so i'll get to a find where the banner views are nulled. So in the on destroy, as I recall. So let's go into main activity. We should have on on destroy method. Oh, totally missing. So on destroy. So now we don't have any memory leaks, and we already have in the on resume resume on the pause when the uh, view gets close, we're pausing. So this is effective regarding the uh, uh, handling resources of this app. And then we did need to, uh, we had a third one banner jobs. So it's in the on stop. So let's call that one in here on stop lifecycle method has to be also implemented here. So now it's fully lifecycle aware, all these banner ads. So it's been taken care of also in this library. So that's about it. And uh, yeah, yeah, before I stop going through this, Let's go through the uh, dependencies. Okay, so this is Jetpack Compose. So you need to uh, have your Compose libraries. And these are the, the default ones that I'm using regarding Compose here. Uh, this has some background uh, network tasks. So use Coroutine. So otherwise, this is ready implemented in here, whether or not you want to use this library. And I'm using the Prefs data store, so it's been implemented in here. Play services to work with the uh, mediation libraries. Yeah, this also actually works with the uh, mediation of, of Google's own mediation. So you can activate or deactivate that in, in your own ad mob. So it's it's been taken care of with this one also, besides the software-based mediation. Mm. We have Meta Audience SDK for Meta's ads and uh, for Meta's, Meta's um, mediation. So this is also operating with Google's ad mediation from AdMob's end. And uh, yeah, that's the Facebook mediation. And uh, Unity, again, it's not activated, but it exists as an option. And finally, we do need the uh, Firebase if you wish to do actually online live remote configuration decisions for users' applications. So that's why this Firebase is in here. And lastly, you can just throw this out if you don't like the other uh, coin dependency injection. I just left it because I really like it. So <laughs> I pretty much use it always. Okay, guys, before we stop, you can go into howtorun.com and 
check out what I'm uh, developing in with my ap applications and uh, any demo that I made today was done with this REST API backend testing application called ServerDog. So that's about it. We'll be back.